Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2013 Mazda CX-5, we're going to be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this will be the right one for you. If it were me and I was wanting to put a hitch on the back of my CX-5, I think a couple things would kind of come to my mind. One being you know the versatility i'd like to be able to use a hitch to do a lot of different things you know whether it's pulling a trailer using accessories or um, anything in between and the other thing i would consider is how it's going to look you know i'd want something that would uh kind of blend in and not stick out like a sore thumb on the back of my cx5 and i feel like the e-trailer hitch here is going to kind of check both of those boxes I am a fan of how the hitch looks on the back of the CX-5. Um, for the most part, it's going to be completely hidden. Uh, you'll really just be able to see the receiver tube opening there. And because of the finish, it's got this uh, matte black carbide type finish. And it does a good job of kind of looking factory almost. I mean, not only the color, but almost the texture is uh, pretty much the same as our back bumper here. So I think it does a pretty good job of blending in. You know, compared to some of the other hitches available, they're all going to be really similar in, in how they sit and how they actually look back here. But, um, you know, it's, it's really just going to be your personal preference, which one you, uh, you like the most. With all that said, you know, this is going to be a class three hitch. So it's going to have that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. Uh, really common size. A ton of different accessories will work with it. The end of the receiver tube is going to have a reinforced collar, a little bit of extra strength. And it's going to use the standard 5 8 pen and clip. I do want to mention though, pen and clip's not going to come included. If you need one, not really a huge deal. You can grab it here at each trailer. And the safety chain openings are going to be a loop style. And they'll provide us with, uh, you know, just more than enough room to uh, use just about any size hook that we might have here. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's going to have a 600 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating, and that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So pretty high number, and you should be able to use uh, just about any size bike rack or cargo carrier that you'd want to, for example. As far as the hitch's maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 4,000 pounds, and that's going to be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of the trailer, plus anything that you might have on it. Uh, I do always like to recommend, though, it's never a bad idea just to grab your Mazda's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your CX-5 can pull that much weight safely. And with that in mind, if you are going to be pulling a trailer, you want the lights to work. You know, that way people uh, around you know what's going on and you'll be safe and legal. And to accomplish that, you can always grab some trailer wiring. Now let's just go ahead and grab a couple of measurements. That way we can try to figure out which hitch mounted accessories will work best. If you go from the ground here to the top and side edge of our receiver tube opening, it's going to be right at about 13 inches. And if you plan on pulling a trailer, chances are pretty good you're going to need to get a ball mount that has a rise uh, in the shank. If you go from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's going to be right at about three and a half inches. And you can use that measurement to figure out that if any folding accessories you might have, can be stored in that upright position without hitting the back of your CX-5. At the end of the day, a hitch you really can't go wrong with. This is probably my favorite one available for the CX-5. And really I say that, you know, because I think it looks good. It's just really simple and uh, it's gonna get the job done. With all that said, as far as getting the hitch installed, it's really not too bad. Um, it can be a little tight whenever you're trying to get it up into place, but you know, other than that, everything's pretty easy to get to and relatively straightforward. So uh, shouldn't take up a bunch of your time or really give you a ton of issues. Um, with that said though, why don't we go ahead, pull into the garage and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here underneath the back of our Mazda and along this edge here on our bumper, we're gonna have a couple of fasteners that we need to remove. So we're gonna have Two of them like this, these are just push pins. You can take a trim tool or even a flathead screwdriver, kind of pry underneath the fastener and pull it out. Same deal for this one here. At this point, we need to support our exhaust and that's because we are going to lower it down. And by doing this, we can kind of control how fast and how far we let it come down. So I'm just gonna take a strap 
and run it from side to side here. I do want to mention, um, if you don't have a strap laying around the house and you want to grab some, you can't get them here at E-Trailer. But with that said, on each side of our muffler, we're going to have two rubber isolator hangers. And you can lubricate them with some soapy water, some type of penetrating oil. And what you're going to do is take a pry bar or even a big screwdriver and work one end of that hanger off. Like so. Same deal with this one here. And I already did the other side of our muffler. It's literally set up the exact same way. And I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to this side of the vehicle, we're going to do to the other side because everything will be the same. But we'll get that right off of there. Then we're able to loosen up the strap and give us some extra room to work. Now, if we look on the side of our frame rail here, uh, we're going to have some stickers covering up our attachment points. So there will be two attachment points. One of the stickers is going to be right here. And you're just going to take a scraper or, you know, flathead screwdriver or whatever you got and get this removed. Like so. And then the other one is going to be up uh, here towards the very back of our vehicle. And we'll do the same deal with this one. And then what we're going to do, since our hitch, the side plates are going to sit against the side of our frame. If you have any sealer or caulk that will interfere, we're going to remove that. So like this piece here, we're going to get that out of the way and just kind of clear everything up. That way the hitch will go up easily. So once you're all done scraping, this is what the side of your frame should look like. Now we can actually get our hardware installed in the frame rail. And uh, for this opening here, what we're gonna do is use a fish wire. So we're gonna take the coiled end, feed it through, have that coiled end drop out of that larger hole. And then gonna put on a spacer block and thread on a carriage bolt. And work that hardware up into the frame. Get it to pull out, make sure it sits flat. And then once you verified it's a good fit, you will just want to push it just right back inside of the frame. That way it doesn't interfere with our hitch when we go to put it up. For the hole closer to the front, in our case, it's going to be a little bit different as far as the hardware combination that we're going to use. For that attachment point, this is actually a threaded weld nut, so I do suggest kind of cleaning those threads out. You can use a tube brush like this to clean them out. And then you're just going to take a bolt, a conical tooth washer, make sure the teeth on the washer are going to face towards the hitch. And this is simply just going to thread in there. So once we're holding the hitch up, you know, that's gonna bolt into there. Now, I do wanna mention, um, each particular vehicle may differ a little bit. You know, some might have two threaded well nuts. Some might have just two openings or like ours, uh, some, um, you know, might have one well nut and one opening. And regardless of what you have, they are gonna give you enough hardware for any one of those circumstances. So. Uh, just something to keep in mind and something I wanted to point out. Now what you want to do is take the included flat washers and on the inside flange of the hitch, so on both sides of the hitch, the side and the other side over there, you're going to take the flat washers, line them up with the holes in the hitch, and I use some packing tape just to tape the washers to it, that way they stay in place. If you do that though, make sure to kind of cut out the centers, that way you can actually get the hardware to pass through there with ease. Before we put the hitch up, I kind of got the look in and I think it's gonna be pretty close to the top hanger here. Um, and so what I think will make things easier, if you did yours like how I did mine with it on the bottom, we're just gonna move that to the top. And I think that'll be a little bit easier kind of looking forward. So uh, with these 
switched over, now we can grab our hitch and get it in place. So with the help of a friend, we're going to get our hitch over the exhaust. I'm gonna take the pull wire and run it through the corresponding holes in the hitch. And we can work it kind of up behind the bumper. This is kind of tight, so kind of expect to have to finesse it a little bit. Sometimes it'll kind of hang up on your exhaust. But once it you kind of find that sweet spot, it will just kind of fall into place. But once we have it in place, we can pull the bolts out. Remove the fish wire. We're going to take a flange nut and get that started hand tight. Now we can get this hardware, get it lined up and get it started. Sometimes if you're having trouble getting it started, if the hardware is loose, you can kind of work that hitch around, you know, up and down. And a lot of times you end up finding that well nut and being able to get that bolt started. Now that we have all of our hardware in place and hand tight, come back with a 19 millimeter socket and snug it all down. Now at this point, we need to make sure and come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can grab one here at E-Trailer, or a lot of times you can go to your local auto parts stores and rent one from them. At this point, we can take our exhaust and re-secure it, we'll raise it back up into position, re-lubricate the hangers, and usually they'll just kind of slide right, right back into place. And now since the exhaust is once again supporting itself, we can go ahead and remove our strap. And last but not least, don't forget to come back and reinstall your push pin tie fasteners here at the back of our Mazda. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2013 Mazda CX-5.